Okay, now that you have your drawing elements imported into SolidWorks as sketch elements, we're not quite at the point where we can do the extrusion. We probably want to clean up our model a little bit more. And one thing most notably is this, uh, the remnants of the tile block in the corner. If you do a pickbox window around that, you can just uh, select everything at the same time and delete it. Two steps previous, we had that option where we can go through and um, select those objects and delete those too. But does it, you might find that as an alternative and maybe a little bit easier uh, thing to do. We also want to move our model a little bit closer to the origin. We got it close as uh, we tried to do uh, before we exited uh, you know, the setup uh, in this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and move it a little bit closer and I'll show you two different methods that we could use. We're going to go ahead and delete this texture too because uh, that's not going to extrude very well when we do that. Uh, one way to do this is to do a, uh, and uh, it has its advantages, and before we actually get to that, let me show you one more thing that might help you in this. Right now we have no constraints and no dimensions on these, uh, on this, on these sketch objects, which means if we were to try to move some of these things around, uh, maybe try to move it itself by maybe uh, clicking on maybe an edge or maybe a, a vertex, uh, it may not work very well for us. Uh, the thing can get awful, uh, you know, contorted and out of shape until we start putting some constraints in this. So we need to fully define our sketch. One way to do this is right click and go to fully define sketch, but we're not going to do that yet. We're not going to do that right now. We do, do need to clean this up and, uh, you know, get this in a little bit better shape before we do that. Um, so if you do do that, if you do grab a corner, if you do grab an edge and think it's all uh, dorked out, uh, do the control Z or do the undo button and it'll go back to where it was before. So just for demonstration. Uh, Control Z will do the same thing. Control Y too, as a complement to that, will do. Uh, will redo that last step. Sometimes that's not always available. So let's do this. What we want to do is we're going to move our object uh, close to the origin. There's a couple things we could do. We do a pick box build window around our whole uh, sketch uh, elements here. Right click and go to move, move entities. We're going to pick a, a point that we want to move and then just move that uh, on the origin. You notice it kind of snaps to the origin, but it doesn't create a relationship there. And just to exaggerate that a little bit, I'm going to pull that off to the side and show you a different alternative. If you're right-clicking that and go to Create Block or Make Block, that is another uh, option there too. And what that does is it adds all these entities into a block, kind of like an AutoCAD. When the block is, uh, you're able to move that block around as one unit, that can't really be changed until you go into the uh, Block Edit function. Let's go to the insertion point, and this time let's take our insertion point uh, instead of having it randomly, uh, you know, apply itself to the corner of the object. Let's actually put that on the center of that uh, arc, and then go to the green check mark. This way, now we can grab that uh, that object insertion point. We can create a relationship with the origin, and now our block is almost uh, fully defined. Uh, we could test that by uh, checking on some of these elements up here and maybe pulling on them and see what sort of constraints or what sort of freedom we have left and see if we can go ahead and uh, clean that up a little bit. We can probably take this edge maybe and make uh, that a vertical relationship and now our block is fully defined and uh, just about ready to uh, be extruded as an alternative. So let's go to features, extrude boss space. You can see the preview of that. I like a mid plane. So this way uh, we can have that plane right in the middle of this thing. It will maintain the symmetry of the, of the item, of the, the object we're trying to extrude. I'm going to put in 0.75. And if we did it the block way, that's the way it is. We don't have to add any additional constraints onto it. But if we want to do it the other way, which is probably a little bit more accurate because it gives you the ability to uh, make modifications to it, you could do that. And what I did is I deleted uh, the feature which keeps the sketch in place, it also keeps the block in place too. Let's go into the block. Let's go ahead and edit that block. And you can do that by editing the sketch and then double clicking on the, the gray lines which denote the block. And uh, let's do this. Actually, let's uh, go ahead and rebuild that. Right click on the block and we're going to explode the block. What that does is it gets rid of the block. It takes those elements right out of the block and puts it back into the sketch. And now we want to define our sketch a little bit better. <clears throat> this is probably the more appropriate way of doing it. So we can begin to add uh, uh, dimensions in here. It's going to begin to uh, define our sketch a little bit better. And probably the first thing we want to do is, uh, before we even do that, is uh, take that point and our origin. If we go back to our uh, feature manager design tree and uh, click on the origin here, it gives us the ability to select those two elements which are stacked together and we can make those coincident to each other. 
And uh, it's just a matter of going through here and uh, defining our sketch. There's some elements we want to go in here and probably define right away. There's some elements in here we're going to define by way of uh, using fully defined sketch, which I'll show you here in just a few moments. But we're going to get the basic stuff done. So we're going to put in some, uh, put in these dimensions. These dimensions really should be the same dimensions that were in uh, AutoCAD. They really haven't changed. So we'll put these into place. The locations of these, we're going to go ahead and rely on a fully defined sketch for that. And you notice that with this dimension, it's kind of missing a digit, so we're going to increase our precision on it. So if you click on that dimension, go to the precision on that, we're going to increase it out to four decimals after, or four units after the decimal. And I think uh, we could probably go ahead and do the fully defined sketch at this point. So the way you do that is you right click over here. Go to Fully Defined Sketch. It gives you some options over here. We'll talk about these options. When you do a fully defined sketch, not only is it going to add uh, additional sketch relations in here, but it's also going to add dimensions, too. We're, all, we're going to keep the defaults in the sketch relations. We're going to add in all the horizontals and the verticals in the sketch relations, which are going to include this line, that line, and that line. Uh, collinear, I don't think there's any uh, applications for a collinear relationship. We're going to keep perpendicular and uh, parallel too. I do believe that this line and this line are going to be perpendicular, so it should be able to pick that up. Uh, baseline, as opposed to chain. Chain is going to go from one element to another, for instance, uh, from one circle to the other. Baseline, I'm going to choose the baseline, perhaps start from that to edge and work our way over to the right. Uh, so uh, this kind of gives you an idea where it's going to start. So we're going to start our, uh, uh, our baseline uh, dimensioning not at the origin, not at the, the, that element down here at the center of that arc, but we're going to start it from that line. Uh, so our vertical dimensions, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do baseline. Ordinate dimension will give us an XY uh, coordinate system on each one of these uh, items in here, which uh, will clutter it up and probably isn't going to be appropriate for this one, but it is an option. So for baseline, we're going to go ahead and choose that top line up there for that. So dimension placement. Uh, we want to make it uh, perhaps above the sketch up here. We're going to put all these uh, horizontal dimensions on the top of the sketch. And we're going to make that to the left of the sketch. That sounds pretty good over there too. And I think that's all the, uh, all the options we have there. We're going to go to the green check mark. And it fills in all the gaps. Now, as you can imagine, there's going to be some cleanup in here. There's going to be some dimensions in here. It probably aren't uh, appropriate. Um, I would like to put an angle dimension in here between like maybe that line and this line. That would be a little bit better than some of the dimensions it puts in here. But that's all part of the uh, cleanup and I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's something you're going to probably uh, do on your own here. So once you get that fully defined, uh, the, the, because every line is black, uh, you're not going to be able to make any, uh, 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 you're not going to be able to pull your uh, sketch lines out of place here. They're going to be fully defined and they're not going to be able to move. At this point, we can go ahead and do the same thing we did before, the extrude boss space. Three quarters of an inch, we're going to do mid-plane again so we can maintain a plane that's right in the middle of that thing. That's always an appropriate thing to do. And then the green check mark. And we're on our way. So remember, I would go back, and I'm not going to do this in the video, we're going to go back and uh, I'm going to go back and clean up uh, the dimensions in our sketch. And... Um, and I think uh, from there we should be in pretty good shape. One more thing you want to do is probably define the material. Remember the material was AISI uh, A36 steel. So it should be down here somewhere. Where are you? ASTM A36 steel. We're going to apply that. Close. Now we're in pretty good shape. So thank you for joining me. We will see you in other films.